of me is wondering, once I upload this video, am I gonna be the next target? Because I haven't really invested in curtains for my windows. So if I'm gonna be involved in this, I need to at least know so I can make a trip to Walmart. In this video, I'm gonna be explaining some drama that happened last month in the book community where an extreme horror author saw a negative review by a YouTuber of his work and he decided to handle his feelings and bruised ego the only way a man would, which is to write a passive aggressive book and dedicate it to her. Before we get into the tea, I do wanna warn you that some of the behavior in this situation is pretty deplorable. You might wanna take a shower after you finish this video and when you fully clean yourself off, what better way to do so with MD Hair, the sponsor of today's video. Growing out your hair when you previously had asymmetrical hair is a pain in the butt, which is why I'm really glad that MD Hair is sponsoring this video and helping me with my hair journey. They really stood out to me because of how you can customize your product with AI. You basically take a quiz and their technology analyzes the results in the scalp photo that you send over. That way they give you a customized treatment with the right ingredients for your personal hair needs. The treatment kit I got includes several different products. And what I love about this is that everything I could possibly need just comes in one single kit. And this whole whole combination is gonna help me with my hair growth with making sure that I don't deal with hair loss. It's gonna heal my scalp because I know it has been through a lot and it's just gonna make my hair stronger overall. I definitely started noticing results pretty quickly. For example, my favorite product that they have is the conditioner. The last time that I washed my hair was about two days ago and it still looks really nice. So if you would like to try out MD Hair with me and customize your own hair growth treatment, you can use my code Cindy70 and you get your first month for 70% off. So once again, thank you to MD Hair for sponsoring and now let's get back to the video. Okay, so let me explain the situation by first introducing you to Matt Shaw. He is the author that is centered around this whole mess and he has self-published hundreds of books in the extreme horror genre. Extreme horror is this kind of subgenre within the general horror umbrella. It's supposed to make readers very uncomfortable by being very detailed in gore. A lot of times it has sexual violence. It's supposed to give you very disturbing mental images. So any possible mess up thing that you can think of in your head that would probably be incorporated in an extreme horror novel. Part of the discourse about extreme horror is whether it is actually something of literary merit or if it is just torture porn. Some people argue that this genre is a way for men to get their fantasies out on the page or that these stories don't really have as much merit because it's like being edgy for the sake of being edgy. Some people question whether a book should be written in the first place if the whole point of it is to just be graphic and disturbing. This topic is a whole separate discussion in itself. I would argue though that even though this type of discussion kind of started the situation in the first place, you'll find that this topic doesn't become relevant as we dive deeper into this situation because at this point it just becomes like about harassment, not whether like this genre is valid or not. My personal opinion is that I don't believe people should be censored from writing anything. Like anyone should have the freedom to write whatever they want. However, I think if people do write within the extreme horror genre, they should be prepared for for the scrutiny that comes with it. And I do think that writing extreme horror is something that you have to be a really skilled writer to pull off. Because if you are a bad writer, it really falls flat and it is very obvious. And at that point, you know, it's not even about like the graphic content. It's more like the disturbing part is how terrible your writing is. Because I do think there are writers who may try to do extreme horror and then they get scrutiny for it and they assume that's just because people can't handle the content that comes in it, which could be true, but it's also like maybe you also aren't that great at writing. Is this the case for Matt Shaw? Well, let's see some of the work that he's written. Probably the most relevant book that he has written before this particular book that we're gonna talk about that's dedicated to the reviewer is a book that is based on Amber Heard. As most of you know, the case between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp was very public and it went into details about how Johnny Depp abused her. But a lot of people believe that Amber Heard was the abuser and Johnny Depp didn't do anything wrong and he was the victim instead. So Matt Shaw is one of the people who do believe that Amber Heard is not a victim, but a conniving woman. He also happens to be like a big super fan of Johnny Depp. So he wrote a book called Her Name Was Amber. And in this book, there's a character named Amber. She enters a relationship with a man named Paul, who's kind of like a self-insert. He's a struggling artist and Amber uses him as a way to climb her way to the top. Then she decides to falsely claim that he abused her and tries to drag his reputation through the mud. So because she's doing all these heinous things, because she's such a heinous woman, he decides that she needs to know what it really feels 
feels like to be scared. So the whole thing is kind of like this revenge fantasy against Amber Heard. A lot of the graphic details include Amber being kicked in the back and face. She gets kicked on the vagina, which results in bleeding. And the abuser's fantasies about shitting in her mouth and forcing her lips closed. I hate to censor my words and use it with like another trivial word, but in order to avoid having this video get flagged, I unfortunately have to do so. But one of the reviews also states that she gets graped by her own father. I think you could argue here that this is basically like a torture fantasy, knowing how the author actually feels about Amber Heard. So he really got his shits and giggles by writing this fantasy where he abuses a domestic violence survivor. He also wrote another book about an orphanage that traffics kids, and apparently it was so bad that you can only get it from his website because it's banned everywhere else, which I'm sure was a very high honor for him. Some other books that he's written include Whore, You Get What You Pay For. Warning, this is an extreme horror novel. It is not intended for those who are easily shocked or offended. So that's just a taste of some of the greatest literary works that he has written. The other player in the situation is Haley Hughes. She is a trauma therapist, but in her free time, she makes booktube videos. They're pretty much the standard videos that you see in the book community. A lot of them are reading vlogs, reviews, book hauls, wrap ups. A very common type of video that booktubers make, including myself, is at the end of the year, you do a roundup of the worst books that you've read. This usually goes hand in hand with a video where you make the best books that you've read. One of Matt Shaw's books appeared in her worst books of the year. This is called A Roll of the Dice. And at first she actually spoke positively about the concept. This book is basically interactive. So it's kind of like a choose your own adventure, but because it's an extreme horror, there's like that twist to it where it gets really graphic. And the story is about a character who lives his life by rolling a dice. So you roll the dice and then you just flip to the page based on what the dice comes up with. So even though she liked that concept, she had a few criticisms of it. One of it is that the book had weird sexual themes. This involved bestiality with a pet that she argues didn't really serve a purpose to the story. She also pointed out how a lot of times in the extreme horror genre where a lot of the writers are white cis men, they don't take into account their readers who are women or queer or people of color. Something to note just for context is that Haley enjoys reading horror books, including extreme horror. So this isn't someone who's unfamiliar with the genre or trying to dismiss it or saying that these books shouldn't be written. It's actually the opposite because she loves them. But it seems that she's bringing up critiques based on her experience with the genre and as a woman reader, which I do think is a fair thing to do because you can love a genre, but also recognize some of the problems with it. Matt Shaw was not happy with this random person on the internet's opinion. So he decides to invest his time and energy into writing a book and dedicating it to her. This book is called Moist Gusset. Not only does it have a lovely title, it also has a cover that is generated by AI. The tagline says, romance written through the eyes of a woman by a man because fuck you, that's why. I want to jump in here just to give a clearer timeline about what happened. So in December 2022, Haley posted a video of the worst books that she's read that year. She named this specific book, but she doesn't post any review about it on Goodreads and she never interacts with the author. This is just something that she mentions on her own personal account. Then in March 2023, he publishes the book dedicated to her. So this was about two to three months, which is a very short amount of time to have written that and work on his craft. But maybe he's such a good writer that he can just pump out a book that quickly. He will claim throughout his numerous responses that the book isn't because he is upset about having a bad review, but that doesn't really make sense considering Haley has never had any interaction with this author. She simply posted a video of the worst books she read and mentioned his book. That's pretty much the only time that she ever talked about him leading up to this situation. So if it wasn't because of that review, then what else could it possibly be? The man that's not adding up. So when you read the author's note, you see right here that he dedicates it to her. For Haley, you hate it when men write through the eyes of a woman so much, and yet you inspired me to write this book, which I am sure you would never read. And that is fine. That being said, I am surprised how much time you spend moaning about male authors misrepresenting people and groups, when you could spend more time enjoying the things which do not upset your delicate sensitivities. There is such an irony here with him saying that she could have spent more time doing other things and partaking in hobbies that don't upset her delicate sensitivities. Meanwhile, he wrote this entire book because she stated her opinion that did upset his delicate sensitivities. Art can be enjoyed by anyone. Art can be created by anyone, only Nazis to take otherwise. Mm, yes, because the quickest and fairest way to paint someone who didn't like your story is to compare them to a Nazi. That's pretty much all the credibility you need. You trout. P.S. Yes, I spelled your name wrong on purpose. Wow. 
He really got her there. Spelling her name wrong on purpose, she should be shaking in her boots right now. Introduction, kind of. Men get crap for writing sex scenes, but I know I can do them well. How so? Because I've had pictures from women flicking the bean and telling me it was over some of the sex scenes I had written. The mind boggles, really, given my usual genre is horror, but each to their own. I'm not here to kink shame. As well as photos of boobs and vaginas, I've even had a dick picture sent through, but that was an accident for. It was from my brother intended for his partner at the time, Matilda. Matt, Matilda, it is an easy mistake to make. I'm not surprised I write them well though, because I am actually pretty good in bed. Only yesterday did I manage to last a full 18 pumps. Read it, one eight. Dot, dot, dot. 18. Oh yeah. My sister was most impressed. My father, not so much. Hardly surprising though, given he only managed seven pumps and even then, one of those missed the hole. My sister laughed. I laughed. Dot, dot, dot. My mother, dot, dot, dot. Well, she said nothing. She's dead. But you know, we like to include her so she doesn't feel left out. Anyway, believe it or not, this is a very serious book. A very serious book indeed. I'm here to prove to the women out there that I am proper good at writing the fucks and the romance. I am by no means trolling. So ladies, prepare to get all moist in the gussets and Remember, pictures to the usual email address. Time to get drippy. I do think it is kind of funny knowing that he's British because it's one thing to be like an edgelord, it's another thing to be a British edgelord. You have a little bit of flavor in the way that they think a sense of humor is. I think he is of the mindset that anyone who takes this book seriously just doesn't get it. I mean, that's usually the excuse when you disguise poor writing as satire, right? And clearly when you are mad that a woman complained about the way that you write women, this is a very appropriate response. For transparency purposes, I have not gone out of my way to read this book beyond a few quotes and excerpts because based on what I had seen, I just felt like the writing was not up to par with what I'm looking for when I typically read books. And it should be okay to not read his book because again, in his dedication, he says that she probably won't read it and that is fine. So if Haley finds out that he wrote a book dedicated to her and she indeed does not read the book, but she did leave a one-star review about it. Apparently this book is about me according to the author's comments on Facebook. Nice to know I can bring valid criticism to everything I've read from him and rather than taking a step back, separating himself from his art and understanding that it's my job as a reviewer to give honest reviews, he writes a book about me. I really live in his mind rent free. If it's not using me for clout, it's CP though, right? So I guess this is the lesser evil. Matt then replies to her review on Goodreads and he points out that she didn't read the book. Oh Haley, you have talked about your job being to give honest reviews, but this is clearly not that. You haven't read the book as made evident by your Instagram post I was just sent. You know, the one in which you state I have written torture porn about you. Had you read this book, you'd have seen it's a very tongue in cheek romance and funnily enough, there are no characters based on you in the book. So yeah, I haven't written a book about you. Sorry to disappoint. That being said, the book is dedicated to you because I was sent a video you did on YouTube in which you state white men cannot write female characters. I was curious, so I thought, I bet we bloody can. And so I gave it a go. And you know what? You were entirely right. We cannot write female characters because I really did suck at it. But you know what? I had a great deal of fun in trying. As for living in my mind rent free, I am afraid not. I can send your videos because you have a knack of upsetting readers within the extreme horror genre and keep mentioning my name along with others such as John Athan and Duncan Ralston. Incidentally, one of their books you decide to talk about in your video, you got the plot entirely wrong, so I'm not sure if you actually read the book or got confused with another, but it doesn't help with the honest review stance you take. All that being said, you have an open invitation to come and have a real discussion with me on a podcast anytime you would like to talk about the genre as a whole and the readers who enjoy it and dislike it. For a discussion to be had and improvements to be made so people can feel safe, you need to talk with people from both sides of the fence. That is where it becomes interesting. So yes, open invitations and you can reach out to me anytime you wish. Take care, hugs and squishes. Shockingly enough, Haley declines to go on a podcast with him. She says, I'll always stand up for what I believe in, but I will also only interact with you on public forums because to be quite honest, you do scare me. It's for my safety. It's not a coward's way out. It's the natural fear that comes from being a woman in the world, especially a woman who has been ruthlessly attacked by yourself and your little posse. You wouldn't understand though, as I've established. Please don't try to take the moral high ground in regards to name calling. If you're going to be upset about me saying your books give incel, then I get to bring out all the screenshots of the name calling of me that's going on over on Facebook by yourself and others. I have never given a fake review. This is the sole book I have ever commented on that I have never read because I was absolutely disturbed with the way you spoke about myself in this book in the same sentence. I don't think people should read something solely fueled by your anger at negative reviews. When you write books, you open yourself up to criticism. I don't like your books, and I think your films are even worse. Again, I'm entitled to my opinion. Please do follow up on the one question I asked that you didn't answer. What plot did I get wrong? I would genuinely like to amend that to make sure I don't spread false information. Thanks. Matt then replies and says, I would have genuinely liked an honest, open conversation with you about the horror genre, seeing as you're campaigning to try to get rid of the dangerous authors, predators being another name you use. But 
oh well. You can go and find the plot yourself, I'm sure. And I'm going back to my actual writing work now to ensure the content can keep coming to give you something to moan about, winky face. But thank you for supporting my work, even through your hate of it. I appreciate the time. Scary author who's repeatedly tried to extend an olive branch for an adult conversation, signing off. I won't be reading further comments here. This whole conversation has so many discrepancies with the logic here. Because first of all, in the dedication, he said it was fine if she didn't read the book. She didn't, so why is he upset about it? He also says that it's better for her to spend her time doing something else instead of anything that upsets her delicate sensitivities. She declined to do the podcast because she knew it would upset her delicate sensitivities. And yet he uses that choice as an excuse for him to take some moral high ground, that he was the one that was extending an olive branch and trying to have a civil discussion, and she was just being so stubborn and refusing it. So which is it? Is she choosing to not upset her delicate sensitivities like you had recommended her to do? Or is she being stubborn and not taking your olive branch based on a very unpleasant interaction in which she found out that you wrote a book dedicated to her three months after she posted one negative review. Another discrepancy is that he admits that she's right about how writing women for him is difficult. So why is he mad that she correctly identified that? And another discrepancy, he says she doesn't live in his head at all. A statement that is said right after he put in a bunch of time and energy to write a book dedicated to her and constantly posts about her on his Facebook group, which we'll get into later, and really, really wants her to be on a podcast with him. Again, all because she had one negative review about his one book. Yeah, she's definitely not in your head. So he's really just harping in on the fact that she didn't read that book and he uses that as like this whole excuse to paint her as a dishonest reviewer and that surely if she didn't read this particular book that she must not have read the other books that she has reviewed on her channel before. But this is where misinformation gets spread really easily because now when people talk about the situation, it gets very easy to interpret that the original review that she left for his book that she did read was the book that she hadn't read and had left a one-star review about, which is not the case. The one book that she did not read was the one where he called her a trout and had dedicated it to her and had written it solely because she had expressed an opinion where she did not like a previous book that he wrote. And so it definitely gets conflated into something way messier and not even accurate. So he takes this narrative and posts about it on his Facebook group. And his whole rant is about how she has lost all credibility as a reviewer because she didn't read the book that he wrote about and called her a trout. Uh-oh, dot, dot, dot. I've upset the little darling. Funny thing is, if she had actually read the book, she would have seen it was a romance, Moist Gusset, and it was dedicated to her and not actually about her. So I don't know where the torture porn comes into it given. Why is it dedicated to her? Well, because she's the troll of the horror community saying white men should not be writing through the eyes of females because we do it so badly. To test this theory, I decided to have a crack and by Jove, she is right, dot, dot, dot. I sure did struggles. Okay, so why are we still talking about it? Why are we still writing a whole ass essay and ranting about it incessantly on your your own Facebook group. As for her comment about writing honest reviews, capital letters, because that is how seriously she takes it, she has proven here that she has not read the book and has written a fake review. The book isn't horror in the slightest, and again, no character is actually given her name. But put to one side, she recently tried giving the plot away for John Athan's book before saying how bad it was. And yeah, the plot she described was not the plot of the book she was talking about. And so again, not entirely sure where that came from. But my love, well done on once again proving to everyone that you are not the honest reviewer you pretend to be and just try to twist things to a narrative that suits you. That being said, I honestly wish you nothing but the best for this horror book you continually talk about writing. He then goes on into his comments to other people who are interacting where he really harps on the fact that she declined his invitation. His response to her declining to go on the podcast is, at what point have I tried to silence you? I can provide plenty of screenshots where I have said that yes, you are entitled to your opinion and if that's to be my work sucks or any author, then that isn't a problem. Even here, I am trying to engage in conversation with you about the genre, but it's you who is declining. Why? Because I am a man and have a different opinion to yourself? Yet earlier today, you accused someone of speaking in an echo chamber so a little double standards because that is exactly what you do, but I offered and you declined, so not a problem. A coward's way out though, after what you said about me in private groups. The groups I am part of can be joined by anyone. They're not private. You just have to actively click on them like the person who sent you the screenshots you've been quoting on your Instagram stories has, or like you have and you just choose to remain anonymous. As for my comments, they're my opinion and like you, I am a loud one and I stand by it. I don't think your videos carry any merit and you're more about negativity than positivity within the community. You mentioned before about how you thought you found your people, but realized you were wrong because of how people attack you. But from what I've Seen, that's not the case. These people are responding to comments you have made. As you're very aware, you don't just give an opinion about a book, but you go out of your way to insult the author too, 
with your name calling antics. But again, here you are trying to be the victim. I generally think you need some kind of help and I hope you find it. With regards to the comment about leaving a fake review to get my attention, okay, that makes sense entirely. I mean, it's not like my WhatsApp number is on my page, my email address easily available, and multiple social media platforms that can be reached. Your way of reaching out is to leave fake reviews. That's good for people to know. What is rather weird is how you dictate to others what they should and shouldn't read, and if they don't agree with you, you tell them to take a good look at themselves because it speaks volumes to the type of person they are. You also run books down without reading them just because of the authors, so that's not exactly an honest review. It's your opinion, sure, but it's not an honest review, so don't pretend otherwise. <sighs> That was a lot. Not only can this guy not be condensed to save his life, and he must insist in speaking in circles and narrowing down on like the one specific details that he feels like he can have a higher ground on, I also now resent him for making this video way longer than it should be because I have to read all his fucking essays because he's pissed that she didn't read a book in which he called her a trout and also didn't go on a podcast because she probably didn't think that he would be an adult considering he, you know, wrote a book dedicated to her and called her names on there. I think this is how it is a lot of times when an author takes something personally but tries to conflate it into a bigger thing. You're upset that this person didn't enjoy your book and said something negative about your book publicly and maybe you feel a little bit threatened by that or your ego is a little bit bruised. Rather than self-reflecting on why it is that you let another person on the internet's opinion affect you so much, you try to paint it as more of a crusade where you're fighting against censorship or you're fighting against dishonest reviewers because she clearly doesn't read all the other books that she has rated and reviewed. It's a lot easier to make it seem like this is a bigger universal issue rather than just a very small issue in which your feelings were hurt because of one book that she read. I think if you have to nitpick the semantics of anything that she writes, like her claiming that the Facebook group is private and him going, actually, it's not private. You can join at any time while ignoring all the other valid concerns that she has just goes to show that maybe you don't really have that much ground to stand on. What's really appalling though is that he actually does have women who support him as proven by some of the responses that he's had. For example, he tweeted, you know, dot, 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 I think Haley fancies me. To which a woman replied, she really does. Other people have said, she didn't read the book. The things she says in her review are literally not even the book. Matt Shaw is a brilliant writer. I love your response. Extremely professional and willing to talk. Unfortunately, people like that never hold civil discussions. To say that an author is what they write about is unhinged. Agatha Christie and Stephen King have a lot of explaining to do. She sounds like she just loves attention. What confuses me here is not the fact that they are misinterpreting anything that Haley has said based on the way that Matt has set up his narrative, but it's the fact that he does have fans, which is fucking weird to me, but like, okay. But that just goes to show, even if you do have people or a random person on the internet who does not like your book, you still have people who enjoy the crap that you write. Clearly through some miracle, you have fans. So why are you bothered by this one person on the internet who has a different opinion about whether your book has any merit? That's something that you have to reflect internally. And to a degree, I understand. Like you can get all the praises and celebrations that you want, but sometimes it can take just one negative comment for you to feel really bad about it and it's a lot easier to cling on to that negative comment than it is for all the positive ones. But that's really something that you as an adult should reflect on and try to figure out, hmm, what are those ways that I can create boundaries and a space where I feel comfortable and not feel attacked? Because clearly when I feel attacked, I will lash it out on another person and go on a crusade and make it a whole big fucking deal and throw a tantrum on the internet about it. Which is really not a productive way to spend your time. Since he has his own Facebook group with supporters, clearly he can go ahead and be in his own little bubble. If seeing that other people don't like your work hurts your ego that bad, you can just stick within your Facebook group. Why go out of your way to hurt your own feelings and get pissed off about it? He claims that other people sent her videos to him, which I don't know if I quite believe, but even if that were true, an easy way to approach this is to just tell those people or make an announcement and say, hey, I don't like it when people send me negative reviews about my work. I would like to create boundaries in that space where I don't have to see that. And that would have been totally valid. He sells way too many fucking books and writes way too fucking much to get angry over a couple of reviews. 
Okay, I was gonna read the entire Facebook post that he wrote, but it was so fucking long that my camera died in the middle of it. So instead, I'm just gonna summarize it for you. I'll post a full screenshot so you can read it entirely if you wish to. If you don't read it entirely, do know that he will throw a fit over it. For the sake of preserving my camera battery though and my brain cells, I will try to summarize it for you. He basically wrote a long essay on his Facebook post claiming that there's been misinformation spread about himself. It is broken down into six different points. So the first point is that he never wrote a torture porn book based on this person. The distinction is that he only dedicated, which is similar to his second point, he just chose to be unnecessarily verbose about it because that is his capacity as a writer. The fact is that he didn't write the book about a person, he wrote it dedicated to a person. That difference is so important so that you know he's not actually creepy or unhinged. But that's also why he blames Haley for not reading the book entirely because she misinterpreted the book as being torture porn about her and spreading misinformation about it. That's valid. Those are the facts. However, I don't necessarily blame Haley for thinking that you wrote a torture porn book about her considering all the other stuff that you've written in the past. And now all of a sudden, three months later, after her one negative review, she sees that you wrote a book that is dedicated to her. It wouldn't be that far of a stretch for her to assume that, nor is it really that controversial that she decided not to read the book. Again, given your past behavior and your past books that she has not liked it reading. So why would she pay money for that? Like imagine paying money to put up with your writing. In a way, that's like a different form of torture porn. In his second point, he tries to clarify why he dedicated it to her, which is because her comment about how men should not write female characters is what inspired him to write the book. So he decided to dedicate it to her due to the book not existing without her in the first place. He states that this dedication was a first name basis only. There were no links to them or links to their work. Yeah, that's how dedications work. Usually the author just writes the first name only. But usually the dedication is to like a family member or a friend or a loved one, not someone who wrote a bad review about your book that you got really upset about and decided to make a book about. And again, as you have stated, you found out that you couldn't write female characters. So I'm not sure what the problem is here. Why is it necessary to insult this person and call her a trout when you also admit that she was correct in her assessment that you couldn't write a female character? Additionally, if you do admit that you can't write female characters that well, where is the reflection for how you can improve yourself as a writer where you are able to write characters that aren't your demographic? Wouldn't that be the mark of a skilled writer to be able to write outside of your biases and boundaries. But I guess we're not actually here to improve your craft or do a thought experiment. We're just here to stick it to this bitch who dared to talk trash about your book. I just realized there is another discrepancy here in this manifesto that he's written. He says that he would never write a torture book about someone without consent. But as I mentioned early on in the video, he basically did when he wrote Her Name Was Amber. This is a real person that he has written about without permission. So that's just one of the many things that he's been saying that are just not quite true. He also says, I stand by comments that no one should dictate what a person should and shouldn't write or read. Because you don't like it doesn't mean another won't. No one is banning anyone from reading your books or forbidding you from actually writing your books. You can write as many crappy books as you want. You're not some oppressed person who's being censored. As we can tell from all of these screenshots, you actually do have the freedom to talk a lot of crap and nobody's stopping you, unfortunately. When someone like Haley or pretty much any random person on the internet says something like men shouldn't write female characters, it's not some law that they have suddenly dictated that now the rest of the internet will follow. It's a hyperbole referencing that systematically and culturally speaking, many male authors, especially in the extreme horror genre, don't write female characters that well. And, and instead, they write women, oftentimes, in a harmful way. Getting mad at this statement and taking it at face value is the same thing as getting upset when someone says, oh, men suck, and thinking it to imply that they actually mean every single man on the planet, when really they're just referencing patriarchy. But I get it, something like subtext is really hard for writers to pick up generally. He then harps on with his third point that he's really bothered that this Haley person has given him a fake one-star review. That review in question is the book that he wrote that was dedicated to her, not the previous book that she had read by him and stated that it was one of her worst books that she's read this year. In his third point, he's trying to clarify that it's not that he's upset that he got a bad review. In fact, he actually embraces it and tries to use bad reviews as a tagline to advertise his books because he likes to be edgy and subversive like that. It's the fact that she wrote a fake bad review. But he conveniently forgets the context here that the reason why this is considered a fake bad review is because she saw that the book was dedicated to her and only exists because she talked negatively about his one book before. She has no reason to bother to read the book that he dedicated to her. In fact, she's only following his instructions to make sure to protect her delicate sensitivities. And again, he said it was fine that she wouldn't read his book, but he's upset that she wrote a review for a book that she technically didn't read. My question is, so what? Is she not allowed to express any opinion about the book that you dedicated to her until she actually reads the book first? Again, why put her through that torture? Why is it such a big deal that she left a review for a crappy book that she didn't read? Maybe it's because 
because you can harp on the fact that she didn't read it as an excuse to protect your ego and your writing, as opposed to before when she actually did read another book of yours in fully and was able to give criticisms based on what she read, that gives less of a ground for you to stand on to defend yourself. Also, it's not like what this one person wrote on Goodreads really affects anything about this book. She's not some journalist. She's not a licensed critic. She's a random woman on the internet. She didn't like that this book by an author that creeps her out is dedicated to her, and so she expressed her dislike for that. Goodreads isn't an official review platform. People write terrible things about books on Goodreads all the time, and that's totally fine because this is for the masses. This isn't something that professional journalists use. The point of Goodreads is for everyday people to keep track of their books or just simply express their opinions on whether they liked or disliked a book. It doesn't matter if their opinions hold any merit or if their opinions are justified or correct or wrong. He finds it upsetting that Haley wrote this review to get his attention when he has all these other methods of her contacting him. Messenger on Facebook or WhatsApp or his email address are readily available. So how dare she not privately confront someone who she finds creepy and potentially dangerous? That's also similar to point four that he writes, which is that he presented an open invite to her to join a podcast. He tries to take the moral high ground and says that this invitation to join the podcast is a way for them to understand each other's point of view. So clearly she's in the wrong here for not accepting an invite to participate in a civil discussion with the same man who called her a trout and wrote a passive aggressive book following her opinion on the internet. The fifth point he makes is that she is playing the victim card because she keeps claiming that she is scared of him. This is something that he doesn't actually believe because he thinks if someone were genuinely scared of someone, they wouldn't call them any names on their private social media accounts. Instead, if a person were actually scared, they would not bring up that person at all. I mean, based on every example of how the real world works, I don't think that's true. I think if a person does scare you, you tend to talk about it on your own social media accounts. But I think what he's implying here that by her talking about him on her social media accounts, that is inviting for some kind of interaction between them. The thing is, when I have genuinely been scared of someone, I tend to avoid them. Well, yeah, that's exactly what she's doing. She declined to be on a podcast with you or engage with you privately because she's avoiding you because she's scared of you. Ironically, while he's saying that she's playing the victim card, he also mentions how he is a victim because he has received death threats on TikTok and a number of her supporters admitting to giving her one-star reviews and basically encouraging others to leave fake reviews. Yes, because a man receiving a bunch of one-star reviews from strangers and a couple of alleged death threats on TikTok that he has never shared before is just as dangerous as a woman finding out that a man wrote a book dedicated to her because he didn't like her opinion on the internet and continues to try to confront her on different social media platforms. They're definitely the same thing. A video got reported to TikTok and it got removed and people thought that he deleted it. And so in the sixth point, he's just trying to clarify that he didn't delete it. Okay. Great. Now that that's cleared up, that pretty much clears all your innocence in this entire situation. And the last point that he makes is that he presented an open invitation on TikTok for her to confront with him. Again, he really can't let go of the fact that she doesn't want anything to do with him. So he keeps on insisting that they must confront each other in some capacity so that she can have the most frustrating, endless argument in the world. And he thinks the saddest part in all of this is that he was willing to have a conversation with someone who clearly doesn't like him in order to try and make things better. Yeah, it's really sad when someone someone clearly wants you to leave her alone and you keep on trying to bother her and she still won't reciprocate or owe you any explanation or conversation. The thing is nobody owes him any kind of debate, not even her. She said no to him. He needs to respect that no, leave her alone. And instead of writing a whole essay, throwing a fit about this one person not willing to engage with you based on your past behavior, maybe try to use that time to improve your craft because as you've realized, you don't write women characters that well. Maybe reflect on why that is. If someone says that you make them uncomfortable, maybe just listen and give them space. Something I also discovered while editing this video is this old Facebook post he made before publishing the book. So he says, for those who don't know me, this book will make them so fucking mad and that is my only real reason for writing it. So this basically means that the book wasn't some writing exercise to see if he could write women or even try to prove Haley wrong. It was very much a passive aggressive response to a review that he did not like with the goal of making Haley and other feminazis mad. So how exactly was this mysterious podcast he had in mind supposed to be a civil discussion? when he literally admitted right here that he wanted to antagonize her and that's been his only motivation for writing the book in the first place. I think that's a pretty good indicator that rather than this guy believing his own BS that he has some noble cause or genuine curiosity to have a discussion, he did have negative intentions, but he's talking completely differently in the Goodreads comments and newer Facebook comments, pretending like he was willing to engage with her in a fair manner and have a civil discussion. This to me seems very manipulative. Like if you're gonna troll a bunch of SJW bitches and piss 
them off. Just own up to it instead of backtracking and making it seem like it's something else. Maybe it's because at this point, admitting the real reason reveals that you were just being petty and you were triggered by a random woman on the internet. I mean, it's pretty clear from the poor writing of this excerpt and the other posts he's made that this is him trying to be funny and ridiculous. But when the sole motivation for this is to retaliate against someone who didn't like your book, I think the real joke here is how you ended up being the snowflake in this situation instead. Making a poorly written book isn't you playing a joke that only your readers will understand. It's just you being passive aggressive and lashing out from being butthurt by a stranger's opinion under the guise of humor. Because using that as a shield is a lot easier than admitting vulnerability and that people's comments really do get to you. What's weird is that he keeps on pretending that he's like chill with stuff by saying things like, I tried to organize an adult conversation with someone to try and make things better for everyone. It has unfortunately been met with a resounding no. Fair enough. And name calling across most platforms and people who've never read me stating they will never read me. Not a problem. You keep saying fair enough, but you also keep writing essays being upset that she said no to you and doesn't want to engage with you. For someone who says they don't care about this, he seems to care a lot. And it's ironic that he paints himself as a victim by insinuating that she has sent all these people to harass him or send him death threats. Meanwhile, he has plenty of supporters himself that leave comments like, honestly, if you had written a book about torturing that stupid bitch, I'd probably have even more respect for you because to be honest, that would be metal as fuck. Hey, you sexually frustrated bitch. Don't know why you're messing ratings of my man Matt books in Goodreads. You didn't read it, but maybe someone should gut you open like a fish, pull your insides out and see if there's anything there or just rotten smelly air. Stay alert, bitch. But yeah, it totally doesn't make sense why she's afraid of him and he's actually the victim here. Anyway, my whole opinion about this is that this is just straight up loser behavior. To me, this is someone who can talk a lot of shit, but they can't deal with getting anything back in return or they'll have a meltdown. It's really cool and tough and edgy to write all of this controversial fucked up stuff, but the moment a single woman on the internet presents some kind of criticism for it, you have a whole meltdown for this shit? That is the most thin skin, sensitive snowflake bullshit ever. This is a tantrum on the internet. It's disguised as an overly and unnecessarily verbose series of essays, but it's a tantrum and you clearly can't handle any shit because you've locked your Twitter account, you're ranting all about this to your Facebook group with supporters, you're very desperate for people to hear your side of the story because you're afraid of this misinformation that's being spread by this one person on the internet. If you don't want things to be misconstrued or for people to see you as a weirdo, try not to be a fucking weirdo in the first place. All of this is not just unprofessional behavior, it's also extremely inappropriate and unhinged. This is all because a man cannot accept the fact that a woman has judged him in a negative light. It's not about reviewers who haven't read the books that they've reviewed and are leaving false reviews. It's not about the misunderstood genre of extreme horror. It is not about any kind of grander issue or discourse at all. It is literally about a fragile man with an extremely frail and sensitive ego. Because if it were about any grander issue, it would not have been so concentrated on this one individual person who didn't like his book. People have been leaving unfair reviews for books that they have haven't read all the time. So why is it different when it's this woman who happens to have read his book and she didn't like it? In fact, he tweeted in 2019 that authors should have thicker skin when it comes to bad reviews, which I definitely agree with, but I guess the sentiment only extends to other authors except for himself. But I guess you can do some mental gymnastics and justify it as you not being mad about a bad review, but about something else entirely, despite the fact that this person has literally never talked about you at all except for this one instance where she didn't like your book. At this point, I don't even care if she's read the book. I don't care if she has misinterpreted him. I don't care if she believes certain people shouldn't write or read certain topics. I don't care about her opinions on the extreme horror genre. That shit doesn't even matter anymore because he has gone so far off the deep end that the plot has truly been lost. Whatever valid points he could have made about reviewers and authors, about the horror genre, about who is allowed to write certain stories, whatever, all of that is completely negated by his extremely inappropriate behavior. And that is because in the end, this shit was taken personal. The moment you belittle her, dedicate a book to her, keep on writing essays about her, make long TikToks about her, any credibility you could have had to make a good point in the first place is lost because now everyone is distracted by how much of a fucking weirdo you're being. If this isn't disturbing behavior to you, it definitely is fucking embarrassing. As a grown man, he should have some more decorum and if anyone is trying to be a professional author, this is really not the way to go. Part of me is wondering, once I upload this video, am I going to be the next target? Because I I haven't really invested in curtains for my window. So if I'm gonna be involved in this, I need to at least know so I can make a trip to Walmart. So I will end the video here and I'll see you next time. Maybe, who knows? If this ends up being my last video, thanks for the people who have supported me. I'll say hi to Haley when I see her in the basement with me. <laughs> Go ahead and unsubscribe my channel and goodbye.